So here is where we get into the juicy questions. Are the UK students friendly? <laughs> Stay safe, please, okay? Hi guys, my name is Imogen. I am 20 years old and I currently study geography with German at the London School of Economics. Now, as part of my LSE series that I've kind of started on my channel, I am joined today by another two LSE students, um, Mayel and Jeremy. Do you guys want to tell us what course you do and where you are from? Yeah, so I'm Mayel, I'm from France and I do international social and public policy. I'm Jeremy, I'm from England and Ghana and I do economic history. So first of all, what courses did you guys apply to study and at what universities? So I applied to international relations at Edinburgh and then at UCL, the same course, so international social and public policy, but at UCL. And then I also applied in France to a lot of different courses, um, mm -hmm. but I won't get go into details about that. So just different universities and different programs. Mm -hmm. And also to the Netherlands to, um, what was the name of the program we played to? Because <laughs> um, we played to the same one. Yeah, International Relations and Organisations. So it's actually really funny because we both turned up here and we were like, oh, like, where did you apply for university? And you were like, oh, I applied to the Netherlands. And I was like, oh, me too. What did you apply to study? Oh, I applied to Leiden University mm -hmm. to do International Relations and Organisations. I was like, no way, I applied to the exact same course. So we could have been together in the Netherlands too. Yeah. But we've ended up in London together, so there you go. Just meant to be together, I guess. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Did you apply to anywhere else in the Netherlands? And to the start? University of Amsterdam and mm -hmm. International Relations, I think. Yeah. What about you, Jeremy? Um, so I applied to Oxford for history. Oh, wow. And then I applied to Durham for history as well, I believe. And then York for history and economics and King's college. I, I can't remember <laughs> Exactly the course. It was something like history and politics and science mm -hmm. or something like that, yeah. And obviously MSc. Nice, yeah. nice. And you did sit form in the UK, right, Jeremy? Yeah, I did. Uh, I went to rugby school. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So then the next question to ask is what grades did LSE want for your course? So in France, we don't have A levels. We had just, I did the French baccalaureate. And so they asked me 15 out of 20 for my overall grade. I, I think mine was AAB. Which was okay. slightly lower than I expected to. Yeah, because it's like related to economics yeah. at LSE. So I thought I was going to have to do like, you know, triple A star and put it in the with AAB. Oh, yeah, nice. That's quite surprising. So obviously, a lot of you out there will have submitted your UCAS forms or will be about to submit your UCAS forms for your application to LSE. And it does take a while for an offer to come through. We've talked about this in the other videos, but when did you guys submit your UCAS form and when did you get your offer? So I think I submitted it like right before the deadline. So I think it's like the 31st of, 15th of January. Yeah, the 15th of January. Yeah, so beginning of January and I got my offer um, end of March. Okay, so it took a little while then. Yeah, it did take yeah. a little while. What about you, Jeremy? Um, I believe I sent it off quite early, I think around September. Oh wow, yeah, okay, yeah. Early, You're really yeah. on it. Because uh, when you do like, uh, applying after it, obviously you have to like send it back. Oh, of course, your early applicant, yeah. So I just did it. And I'm just going to tell you, I rushed, I was like, oh my god, I'm going to have to put this in. So if you're doing it, if, you, if you're if applying next year, don't feel like really scared if you're doing like September, October and you haven't done anything, it's completely normal. Yeah, because yeah. obviously if you're applying to Oxford and Cambridge, you need to submit your application earlier. But if you're not, then you can take your time with it because LSE don't consider yeah. your application yeah. until January. Yeah. So you guys obviously both applied to the UK and you've ended up at LSE. Why did you choose the UK specifically and why LSE? So the UK mostly because I wanted to speak English, like have my mm -hmm. education in English. And also because there's it's a really good university, so yeah. LSE is, once you get in, all you decide just to go because it's very good. Yeah. And I'm not a huge fan of the French system, so I just prefer to leave. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I could have applied to Ghana, but I just, I always wanted to go to the uh, university in the UK and specifically LSE, my mother went here for a master's, um, uh, my sister was here last year, so wow. it's a school that my family very much loves, <laughs> so yeah. um, I've always wanted to at least apply here, so I'm mm -hmm. just lucky enough to get in here. And obviously we know that LSE is a very prestigious university here in the UK, but how are British universities generally thought of in your country? Um, honestly, people don't talk about them too much, um, really? especially in my school, because it was international, but not too international. And mm -hmm. so students didn't even think about applying yeah. to the UK. That's really interesting. And what about you, Jeremy? Yeah, um, so in Ghana, UK universities are quite a big thing. I feel like if, if you're not going to school in Ghana, you're going to the UK US or Canada. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, so specifically, I think particularly the UK, because it's, it's a 
large immigration of Ghanaian students in the UK. Mm -hmm. And in, UK, in Ghana, there's about four schools that you have to go, like four UK universities you have to go to to be recognised. You have to go to either Cambridge, Oxford, uh, <laughs> Warwick or LSE or UCL if you're so far. Oh, really? If you go to those schools in Ghana, people are like, wow, you weren't there? Like, yeah. it's probably to spell it, yeah. So. Really? So how straightforward was the application process? And I know a lot of international students have to do the additional English language test thing. Um, did you guys have to do that at all? Yeah, so I did the TOEFL or TOEFL, however you say it. Uh, so you just have to book a test and go and take it, but you do have to practice for it because it's a pretty like, just like precise questions that you, you have to practice for it. But there's a lot of different tests that you can uh, take and LSE tells you what you need to get. But your English is quite good because you spent a year out in the US, right? Yeah, when I was younger with my dad's job, we went to the to Boston for a year. So that's where you learn English. You learn English. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. What about you, Jeremy? How was your application process? Well, pretty straightforward. Obviously, as a British citizen, I didn't need to do any sort of language tests. So mm -hmm. it was just straightforward UCAS process, yeah. yeah. So what support were you given as an overseas student and how easy was it for you to get a visa? Because actually I don't think, Jeremy, you obviously wouldn't have needed a visa. And um, Mayel, so, you don't need a visa until next yeah, month. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So for now I don't need a visa, but you can apply as a student to the pre-settlement scheme. Mm -hmm. So that means that you're just, I think that what it means is that you're just informing the government that you're here and you're allowed to stay here for the yeah. whole, for your whole like education period. So I just have to do that pretty soon yeah. and then I will be able to stay here without a visa. So and your fees would also stay the same as um, yeah. before Brexit. And they guaranteed for my for our year that international students, well European students, can pay the same fees as UK students for oh. the two years. That's very, very nice of nice. them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. very nice. <laughs> So here is where we get into the juicy questions. Are the UK students friendly and are you friends mainly with international students or are you friends with UK students or a mixture of both? So I feel like the hall where we live in is pretty uh, UK students mainly yeah. because we have 31 week contracts, contracts so yeah. we have to move out um, for our breaks. Holidays, yeah, yeah. holidays. So European, like international students don't really do that much yeah and it's nice and UK students are very nice they're like any Aww. other students I'll pay you later yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I mean there aren't many international students from Africa that I've really seen so that's true I, yeah those ones I've really talked to uh, if they're here I haven't really found them sadly mm -hmm. but in terms of international students in general yeah I think I like said there's a very good mix here of a lot of people there's a lot of English people but also there's a decent number of people from you know like different parts of Asia and stuff like that. Yeah, so, that's um, true. everyone's here really friendly. As long as you talk to them, they'll talk to you, and everything yeah. will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, LSE does have a really, really good reputation. And is this important to you guys? Was that something that you considered when you applied to the university, or was it just that it was a competitive university and it did your course? No, I think that the reputation matters more for the employer later on. Like for mm -hmm. me, I don't really care because as long as I'm enjoying my education, that's pretty much what counts. I mean, I wouldn't say I wake up every morning like, you know, fist bump, like, yeah, I'm an LSE. <laughs> LSE! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm very happy. I, I think it's important for me to be in a university that I consider really good and like, yeah. my family consider really good. And obviously the employer is yeah. like, okay, it's better than, you know, maybe some other places, mm -hmm. which it's always going to be a good thing in life if you have some advantages from that, so yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Jeremy, you've been here for a couple of years already, but what has slash was the biggest culture shock for you guys coming to the UK? So, um, obviously, I lived here when I, for the first like, eight years of my life, so mm -hmm. in terms of coming back to the UK when I was about 16, biggest culture shock was really, you know, I mean, he was different here. Yeah. Um, so get ready for that. If you're an international student, English people are quite sarcastic. Yeah. I thought I was sarcastic. I came to England again and it was like, wow. Like, <laughs> you don't know if this is a yeah. joke or not. But yeah, it, everyone's still funny though. It's still lovely. Still yeah. lovely. Well, yeah. when, when you get the joke, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. When you don't, it's like... It's like <laughs> yeah. yeah, I usually ask people like, was that sarcasm? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> 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 what did you find was the biggest culture shock for you? I mean, for me it was mostly coming to a big city because I don't mm -hmm. come from a big city. So it was mostly like London, like a lot of people, high, bu high buildings, mm -hmm. stuff like that. 
Um, but also just the food was kind of like Sunday roast dinners. I did not know they existed. <laughs> um, and so that type of stuff is pretty, uh, the food is... Yeah, I think I might change my answer to the food. The food is pretty, everything fried. Yeah, you, you fry everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like... I feel like that might be specific to our halls sometimes. When it's like fried, I don't know, they literally yeah. fry everything. Even if you yeah. have like an English breakfast, it's like... Okay, yeah. It's fried, fried. It's not exactly the most healthy thing in the world. The thing that I just feel like... The amount of potatoes you oh, can yeah. it. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's I mean, when I was at boarding yeah. school, we had potatoes every single day. Oh, here too. <laughs> here too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Always potatoes. Day, yeah. Different types of potatoes. Yeah. You can choose. Yeah. And what do you guys miss most from home? Because obviously you've been here for what, for three months now? And we're about to go yeah. home in the next couple of weeks, which is exciting. Um, what are you looking forward to going back to? So it's probably very stereotypical, but mm -hmm. cheese and bread. I, I mean, I gotta stay with my culture. I <laughs> cheese here is always like grated, 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 and it's not you great. Don't your cheese. No, we eat. We cut nice piece oh, of right, cheese, then we put it on. But we don't eat only cheddar. Like <laughs> you only eat cheddar. We have no. good cheese. Okay. So we're being yeah. slated for our cheese and potatoes <laughs> today. Yeah, so I guess cheese and bread. <laughs> yeah, and an oven, because here we don't have an oven and I want to cook yeah, it. Yeah, that's oven, true. So I'm excited to like, see my oven again. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, similar, I'd say the food. I do miss like proper stew with my food. I miss spice. That's like, yeah. oh, I miss. Yeah, taste and Yeah, spice. just like, I miss my <laughs> chicken, all that, all the food. Yeah. I'm, but something I really do miss is just like good beaches, like in Ghana. It's pretty much all like the, the the whole coastline, so I used to go to the beach quite regularly. It was quite like frequent, but here it's just you know London city, cold, cold, wet, wet, drizzling. Dark it's just by yeah. 3 PM, you know, <laughs> sort yeah. Of vibes. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited to go back to the sun. Yeah, Definitely. I don't blame you. So what is the best thing about the UK? Please don't think about this for too long. <laughs> oh, um, best thing. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't. Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um. Okay, so it might be just London, but like dogs with coats. Like that's <laughs> a thing that we love. <laughs> so I would say that um, seeing like huge dogs with like a whole outfit on, that is pretty cool. <laughs> I don't have a dog with cold sand, um, but in terms of London in particular, I just love the buildings. It's very weird, maybe some people don't like buildings in London, but yeah, everything looks really historic. I love walking by buildings and be like, yeah, this guy who died 400 years ago, he used to live here. He's just, his bed was up there. So it is quite surreal sometimes, like the people in your textbooks living there. Yeah, living yeah down the street, that's true. Like, Being in the heart of everything is yeah, such a privilege. It's quite, it's quite cool, yeah. yeah. I think Maya might have already answered this in the previous question, but what is the strangest thing about the UK? I might stick with my dogs and coats, yeah. yeah. And no, can add the matching outfits with the yes. owners, that's <laughs> next level too. Yeah, that's next level. But, okay, one strange thing about, the, about, again, London in particular, is as much as I said people are friendly, there is a London particular thing where it's like, you're walking down the street, you do not look at anyone, it is yeah. straight on. In Ghana and Accra, even when it's busy, people are quite lively, quite, you know, yeah. there's quite a lot going on. But London, at times, you hear 9am, walking by, like Hobo Station, it's straight on. Yeah. No one looks at each other, earphones in. That's strange, but I mean, you get used to it after a while, so it's not too yeah. strange. Obviously, a lot of you will be putting in your applications to come to the UK, and a lot of you out there might be international students. So what would be your top tips as international students or students who have kind of like dual nationality? Um, what would be your top tip for somebody applying to LSE, um, to London universities and UK universities in general? Yeah, so I would say start the process early because it does take time, especially mm -hmm. if your school does not help you. It does take a lot of time to like, get to know the whole process and figure your way. Through. Yeah, I think UK is quite specific to the UK. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah, so you, you have to get familiar with the process before you can actually do it. Mm -hmm. And so I say, yeah, start early, do a lot of research about all the programs, because we don't know, I, as an international student, I didn't know anything about any school or any programs. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to like go through all the programs of every university to like find the ones that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you get here, join a lot of clubs, societies, uh, sports is very nice mm -hmm. um, and just say yes to everything because that's that's what's good not not, not everything. everything not yeah. everything <laughs> yeah stay safe but, things, okay? <laughs> made the most of the opportunities yeah because yeah. there are a lot so just have fun yeah i'm on the similar vibe i think 
try and come here if you can. If you can't, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but watch those videos. You know, this is my LSE experience. It does help. So if you do that, I think you should have a, a lovely time, yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. You're plugging the channel here. Yeah. <laughs> so that is all of the questions for today. A massive, massive thank you to Maya and Jeremy for being in my video. If you have enjoyed this, then do give it a massive thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below to see more information about LSE from me and also see what life at LSE looks like. If you have any questions for Maya or Jeremy or myself, then do leave us a comment down below and we will get back to you. Have a lovely day and I will see you next time with a new video. Bye.